So we're back working on this 05 Astro van for the rear end clunk. There was a tremendous amount of backlash. Yet the pinion bearing is tight. It hasn't lost its preload or it hasn't isn't worn to the point where the pinion's walking in and out. So I've removed the brake calipers, assemblies, uh, brake rotors, uh, rear diff cover. I'm going to show you what I found in here. Okay, so if we look at this, side bearings have kind of lost their preload. That's crazy. I'm surprised it didn't make more noise. Wow. Doesn't look like this thing has been apart before. Although the cover has been off. So it's probably had axle seals done. That's kind of worn out. Well, let's mark the caps. Let's see, let's mark this one right here. And this one. And then we'll take the caps off and have a look at the side bearings. I don't think we'll have any problem pulling the carrier out. Well, the shims are there. Silly boy, gotta take the axle shafts out first. All right, let's stick this bearing cap back up. We're going to take this lock pin bolt out. Hopefully it's not broken. Won't come out of there. Oh yeah, it will. Don't pull the pin right out. Pull it down till it's flush, push the axle shaft in, pull the axle shaft out, reach over here, pull the axle shaft in, push it out, and then put the pin back. We're going to take it apart anyways, but just so that the differential spider gears don't fall out. Pull this axle shaft out. Inspect the axle bearings. That one looks okay. A little wear on the seal surface, but the bearing looks okay. Okay, now we should be able to take that carrier out. And don't mix the shims up. Right there for now. Yeah, I'd say the side bearings are worn. Wow.
This one is the bad one. Yeah. So the side bearings lost the preload. Let's see if that. Let's see what this pinion bearing is on. It's pretty rough. No magnet in here. Normally there's a magnet in here. Well, we'll take the pinion out next. So use a uh, harmonic balancer puller to pull the flange off. I, I like to put the diff cover back on with a couple of small bolts while I tap the pinion out so it doesn't fall on the floor and chip or something like that. So you can use a steel punch there's notches in the bottom of the case to knock the bearing up it knocks the seal out as well the seal, there goes the bearing, there goes the ray. And now the inner bearing is basically the same. Axle seals out and wash the differential housing. We get ready to put the new bearings in. How does this bearing look? Let's wipe it off and have a look at it. Well, it's pitted. You can see the pitting on the bearing. That's from the metal that's been floating around in the in the diff. Now there's a good chance because this crown and pinion was run out of alignment for quite a while that it may have some unusual wear on it and it may hum but it's got to be quieter than it was yeah they say it hums because it doesn't know the words to the song that's weird what's that huh. like a piece of of metal from the back of the bearing is stuck on the, in the case there. Let's see if that... You know, if you look at this bearing, you can see how it's badly worn. I'm looking for a piece off the back of the bearing because there's something right in here something in the case like a piece of metal chip and I wonder if that's why the bearing failed because that would have put huh. I'm going to zoom in on that so you can see what I'm talking about Enhance. So there is a, a chunk of metal there for sure. Look okay. at. I don't know if that camera's going to pick that up. No, I dropped it on the floor. But it's like a piece of flat metal that was stuck in behind the bearing. 
that would have put a, a stress on that bearing. There's a dent in the actual housing. I'll have to clean that up with some emery cloth. There's a little impression in the housing where that bearing was crushed into the cast. Oh well, that's why we're here. Well, there's a considerable amount of metal in here. You see the silvery content. Usually there's a magnet in the bottom of this case here, but this has def definitely been a part before the axle seal has been replaced. You can see that imperfection in the housing there. Something was definitely jammed in there, right there. I'm gonna clean that spot with emery cloth. And you can see where that was on the back of the bearing. Okay, you can see that bearing how it's failed now I'll find that spot on the bearing where the right there you can see that little piece of metal was jammed in there so I'm not sure if that com or, uh, contributed to the bearing failure but it certainly wouldn't have been good for it So there's the differential housing all washed out. I found a magnet from a power steering reservoir, stuck it in there. Uh, should be a magnet in there, usually is. Somebody must have taken it out and never put it back. Still going to take some emery cloth to this imperfection in the case, but it feels like it's dented in, if anything. And uh, we're waiting for the bearing kit. It was supposed to be here today, but because of the long weekend holiday, Everything's delayed by one day, so the axle bearings look pretty decent. I'm going to put new axle seals in it. I use a var saw and a long wand to blow the axle tubes out. Yeah, press the bearings, uh, pull the bearings off the differential carrier. So you can see that I had to cut the, the uh, cage off. Got a new lock pin bolt here for this. We're going to wash this up as well. Uh, press new bearings on here. And let's take the pinion bearing off now. So you need this selective washer out of the pinion. So we're going to reuse that original one because we're not changing the crown and pinion. So the pinion depth should be good if it was set properly before. Replace the axle seals. Pack some grease around the inboard lip of the seal so the garter spring doesn't pop off when you're tapping it in. So we're waiting for parts now. So we got the bearing kit this morning. It comes with everything except the axle seals, which you've already installed. Uh, this is not a master kit. Master kit would come with a selection of shims, but I have a whole box full of shims. So we should be good with the original shims. Just going to compare the original bearings here. That's the rear pinion bearing, that's the front pinion bearing, that's the two side bearings, and of course the pinion seal and the crush sleeve and the pinion nut. Let's get going. Well, I'm not a happy camper. This is a side bearing. Which one of these is the one that was bad? Yes, this is the axle side bearing. So we got the wrong kit. Damn it. So the kit I got is an SDK320-A. This is actually for the front diff on an all-wheel drive version of this van. The number I need is an SDK320. Uh, I also found a national number RA320-B and a Timken number DRK320-C. So much confusion. Anyways, I got the right kit hopefully coming. I got a list of the parts that were in the kit, this SDK320 and all the bearing numbers that are in the kit, and it looks correct, but I won't see it till tomorrow. Oh well, one day delay. So take two, SDK320, not 320A, 
This bearing set looks correct so far. I'm going to compare it before I cut the bearings out of there. Well, that's the pinion bearing race looks the same. Side bearing race looks the same. And this is another side bearing race, I think, yeah. Okay, and here's the front pinion bearing. So that looks the same. So we're going to start disassembling this thing now. So I'm setting the pinion bearing preload and it's the spec is 15 to 30 and I got about 25 let's try it in the opposite direction yeah about 24 25 just gonna tweak it just a bit more so the bearing cap bolt torque is 55 foot-pounds That's a lot better backlash. We're going to check it with the dial indicator. It's probably five to eight thou spec. So the spec is five to seven thou, like I said. And we got five thou. I've checked it in a couple places and it's good. So now we're going to uh, run a pattern and see how it looks. So brush some gear marking compound onto the teeth. This is the drive side. This is the coast side. It seals awful tight. And I'm going to use a wrench on here to turn it back and forth against the pinion and hold the pinion. So on the drive side, it's a little close to the bottom of the tooth, but not bad. You can see this one here is pretty close to the middle and on the coast side it's pretty good a little bit close to the heel but again these gears were run out of alignment for so long they're probably worn so I'm sure this is going to be significantly quieter than it was so now we're going to put the axle shafts in and finish reassembly well there's the rear end back together New cover bolts, sandblasted the cover and painted it, and greased the U-joints, reinstalled the drive shaft, filled it with gear oil, took about two and a half quarts of 7590 synthetic, greased the U-joints, and we're ready to uh, put the front end together now, or ball joints, tie rod ends. So there's the front end all back together. New left front wheel bearing because of the excessive air gap and the weak speed sensor signal. New lower ball joints, new upper ball joints, inner and outer tie rods, adjuster sleeves. Roughed in the toe adjustment, I measured these tie rods to the existing ones that I took off and I set them at the same length. It's got to go for a wheel alignment. Uh, i got to grease these ball joints on this side. Yeah, I still haven't greased this one. Put the tires back on it and go for a road test. wind noise from the rack on the roof but otherwise the rear end's pretty good it's a wheel alignment the steering wheels crooked slightly off to the left toe adjustment mainly it doesn't pull so that's it no more unwarranted ABS actuation no more ABS light on thanks for watching